Let's have hoods. I had a theory that women who had supernatural gifts were either put into a convent, a loony bin, or prison. And they threatened poor Sir Bernadette with that, which really meant she could have no offspring. They knew it was hereditary. Psychism. Companion druids, let us spread out the vitality and love of fire of the goddess Grania. Come! The fire of energy! Fire! <laughs> May good be with all beings in the name of the sun goddess Grania. Amerke. Five minutes later, the sun came out and I headed for the west of Ireland. After a short break, naturally. It's never been cooler to be a Celt. Wherever you go these days, it seems that everyone wants a little bit of Ireland. In an increasingly homogenised, standardised world, Ireland still seems to represent romance, beauty, a good time, authenticity, and of course, mysticism, especially for me. Like millions of other people who've never actually lived there, Ireland makes me feel like I belong. Perhaps it's the earth speaking to us. Well, it's just a thought. I'm a true born Irish man. Oh, they call me Connor Dan. I was bred and born in Ireland, you must know. Or someday I'll go back just to visit that old shack. It's the cottage with the horseshoe or the door. If there is such a thing as genetic memory, and for the moment I can't remember whether there is or not, then perhaps having an Irish mother explains why this country seems so familiar. Now here's what I'm wondering. If your passport says one thing, but your heart's telling you another, then which is speaking the truth? Is it possible that in some genuine way I really spiritually belong here, or am I just a sentimental fool? I came here first in 1961 with my wife and I said to her, I'm going to live here and she looked at me and she said I'm not going to live here I don't want to live here and eight years later I came to live here I left my family to come here because I couldn't not there was something so deep inside me that said I've got to live in the west of Ireland so in the divorce the west of Ireland was cited <laughs> well just about I think that's a fair comment <laughs> Ireland is a very jealous lover and if you if you leave the west of Ireland if it's really in your heart and you leave it it's like being attached to a piece of elastic you know after a month or two it starts stretching and it starts twanging and you're pulled back and it doesn't matter whether you've got an English accent or not if it's in the heart you've had it talk of the earth as a living organism seems to come quite naturally in Ireland if Michael Poinder can convince me that the earth's alive Perhaps I'll believe I might be related to it. I love these stones. I see these stones in lots of places, but I don't really know what they were for. I mean, we're all tooled up with our yes. sort of with our Mark. Neolithic surveying <laughs> equipment here. That's What's right. <laughs> well, first of all, I'll explain these things that I've got in my hand here. Shall I? Yeah, please do. Okay, because one thing we learn about our ancient civilization, and we're learning it again today is that all these ancient structures were always sighted, Stone Age and Bronze Age, always sighted over water lines or water conjunctions. That means underground water flowing in the earth, the blood of the earth flowing like veins in our, in our body. And I'm going to ask you to try and find it. I'll put the markers in for you. That's it, nice and steady now. Think water in the earth, because that's what you're trying to find. Uh, so beginning to shiver, there they go. Just about to part the Whoa. two. Hey, there you go. <laughs> okay, we're putting one in here. Honest, it's for real. There you go. So now you see we're beginning to get a line. Yeah. So do you want to do another one? I want to do it all week. I don't just want to do another one. <laughs> My dowsing debut seemed to establish two lines. 
One led to the ruins of a 6th century oratory, the other to a grove of trees. The place is believed to be an unconsecrated graveyard, a burial place for unbaptized children. And it's, it's all linked with that standing stone. It's like an acupressure point, it's like an acupuncture point of the earth. When you have a cross of energy underground, mm -hmm. it, the energy then forms into a circle. The energy, actually, the energy field falls, forms into a circle. And here we have that circle engraved on the stone here. One here. Get in. Am I going too fast? Well, just a bit. No, it's all no, right. It's okay. You carry on. One here. I've not seen sticks like these since the Christian brothers used to hit me with them. Well, I used to have the same problem at public school. I'm, I'm just following this circle, you see. All Other right. one behind me here. Well, I'm just following you. And there you see the circle of energy, the unseen circle of energy, this is emanating from the underground water cross. Well, something made my rods point out the lines, and in the absence of a scientific explanation, unseen energy seems a reasonable catch-all term. There's also much talk of energy emanating from the Aran island of Inish Moor, where I'm told there's a rebellious community of Catholic priests with pagan beliefs. I have fantasies of Craggy Island and Father Ted, but the reality is Father Dara Malloy. Well, why did you choose to be here? Is there a, is there a spiritual history to the island? Oh, yes. This has been a holy island for thousands of years. There's monasteries everywhere on it. There's holy places everywhere. I mean, I am a priest and I'm a member of a religious order, but the church was far too structured and bureaucratic for me. I was being suffocated. And to come out here, it was like the camera coming into focus. I just saw everything clearly about my life. This is where I must be. I must live like the Celtic monks lived here for thousands of years. In the early days of the Irish church, of the Irish Christian church, it took on wholesale all this older, older spirituality, if you like to call it pagan. I call it Celtic because it was, pagan is a sort of dismissive term for, for us Irish people anyway. To say something is pagan means well, to yeah. give it no respect. That's right. Whereas, in fact, it's our Old Testament. In other words, we've to, we should give it a huge amount of respect because it's the gathering of the people's wisdom. And the Roman church, which we now have, is a total imposition. And it's this notion that our Irish church, when it had an indigenous expression, when we had our local culture built into it and our own landscape built into it, that it was a very vibrant and alive thing and a very nourishing thing for people. Mm -hmm. But once people begin to realize that that was in fact the truth and that it matches, it would match sort of the longing that's still in people in this country for some type of spirituality, this would be a creative way forward rather than just walking away from the church to actually begin to be creative about it and to put together something from the ground up. For example, if we do a, a round of the wells here, the people will be walking around it in a sunwise direction, or in Irish it's called Thuris Deshel, a journey to the right. And they're going to be walking around the well seven times with seven stones in their hand. And each time they pass a point, they'll drop one of the stones. And they'll be saying prayers as they go round. And that's a very ancient tradition that goes back before Christianity mm. to the time when wells were regarded as sacred places. They were a, a, a feminine point, which was a sort of an entrance into the womb of the earth. And uh, doing the round of it was imitating the sun around the earth. So you're harmonizing your life with the cosmic rhythms. It's a long way from doing what the Pope tells you to do. For myself, the gospel is that the Holy Spirit was given to all of us. And if you like, that means that control comes from below. And what the people are nourished by is what's right. And if we're nourished by going around a well, that's what's right. And it doesn't matter what the Pope says. Intrigued by this talk of sacred wells, I headed back to the mainland and the natural wilderness known as the Burren to search for St. Coleman's well in the company of author and philosopher John Moriarty. This isn't really the the soft landscape that we associate with Ireland. Now, quite suddenly, we have come into a desert. And these are the old, it's almost like a Judean desert, a yeah. biblical desert. And it is into these deserts that people came seeking encounter with God. Because if the bush is to burden, and if God is to talk out of the burning bush to you, it is in, probably in places like this that it will happen. The gods might have left the great religion and have grown very tired in the great religion. 